I was uh, taking notes and writing some things that I wanted to share and um, really started to just feel this fullness as I was remembering so much that has happened in our individual journeys and my personal journey. But maybe I'll just refresh and, and explain the genesis, at least as I remember it, is uh, has been interesting as Facebook has been sharing my memories of what was happening in life around this time. Um, I was in Costa Rica four years ago and two weeks and had been deep in uh, medicine work away from any technology. And when I went to go check on my flight home, it's when I found out that we were hit, we were going to headed for lockdown and that there was a run on short uh, toilet paper. And I was like, Oh, Oh my God. And I thought to myself, well, I should consider staying here. Like I'm in paradise right now. Why would I go back to a place where there's panic? There's no toilet paper, you know, this, and it seemed just like I should stay here. And I started to think about, well, I don't know how long I would be stuck here away from my family. You know, what if something happened to my parents and I couldn't go to help them? And then I really started thinking, and if people are locked in their homes, they're going to be hungry to connect digitally. They're going to be on their computers trying to find some sense of connection through webcams and, and chat and things like that. And I realized, like, I might be the world expert in that. Like, I have been doing a group hug on the internet every week for 20-something years. I've ex really given a lot of thought and exploration and, and I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm not a doctor or a nurse, but I have an essential skill, I think. And I have a responsibility to go home and do something. And really quickly, I just got this hit, like, hey, for the next month or however long we're in this, just commit to doing a gratitude circle twice a day, every day at noon and six. Let's just commit to doing that. Now, if you would have asked me at the time, hey, are you willing to commit to twice a day for the next four years? <laughs> I, I do not think I would have signed up for that. Uh, but I'm so glad I did not have that foresight and that I just knew to do, this is what I'm supposed to do right now. You know, it's like that lesson from the, uh, life lessons from a, a lion tracker. I don't know where I'm going, but I know exactly how to get there. And, you know, we played around more at the beginning with some different formats and more games and, and. I think the first one was called Gratitude Circle, and then at night it was called like Isolation Nation. But very quickly, I feel like it felt like, oh, this feels right. Like this is this is meaningful and helpful. And also, we adjusted our timing back then so that we could hear the pots and pans being that that Jamie would open her window, and we could hear the people banging their pots and pans to celebrate the essential workers at night. Do you guys remember that? That, um, And so there was this beautiful feeling of unity around the world as we got to hear the also trapped people on the other side of the world. And it didn't feel so lonely. And then... There's so many unexpected lessons for me. I had no idea that a group gratitude practice would be so much different than a singular solo gratitude practice. You know, there's a lot of people that talk about the importance of gratitude. And in fact, there's like scientific research that says that, you know, if you would like to be happier, the number one by far scientifically way to do that is a gratitude journal. You know, like that... Uh, Keeping a gratitude journal is the equivalent of happiness of, I think, doubling your income or like getting a, you know, a $50,000 raise or it's something crazy, you know? So like as hard as you're working to get more money, 
you spend five minutes a day in gratitude and that will uh, impact your life th the same in terms of your level of contentment. But the reality that I think we've been shown is that a group gratitude practice is exponentially different, exponentially more, because if you sit down every day, you are still dealing with and working with your own limitations of what you can see in that moment. And if you've ever kept a gratitude journal, I think it, it's easy to slip into, I'm grateful for my dog, I'm grateful for the sunset, I'm grateful for my family. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you get to witness people and hear, you know, the lavender wet naps that Sherry was grateful for, you know, or when Paul Paul got his dryer back working in his house, you know, um, simple walks around the block that people would share. And you start to like, go, oh my gosh, I have not been counting that in my inventory of why life is awesome. And that practice of like keeping that inventory, you just like, it's like, oh my gosh, I have this, this room filled with treasure that I have closed the door on because it's just a part of my world. And then as other people mention it, you're like, oh my gosh, I have that. Oh my gosh, you're right. And sometimes people share something that is not a part of your world. I always use the example of puzzles. Sorry, Jamie. But it's like, ah, well, I'm so glad that makes you happy. And that makes me happy that it makes you happy. And I think sometimes people, when they hear about gratitude practice, there's this instinct of like, well, that's spiritual bypassing. You know, to just like, everything's fine. Everything's great. Everything's great. That is not what we do here. And that is, that is not what a gratitude practice is. A gratitude practice is not getting sucked into the narrative of everything sucking and then being so depleted that you can't enjoy anything. Because if you are looking for it, it, it's not hard to find reasons why people suck and the world sucks and we're doomed and everything is terrible. And then you forget about the treasure. And so a gratitude practice, I think, is that way, that, that in incredibly important spiritual practice of yes and. Yes, people are terrible. And there is kindness all over the place. Yes, the world is horrible. And there are miracles happening all around me. Yes, my body hurts and there's so my heart is beating all night long when I'm sleeping. And that that spiritual practice of holding both. Can you expand enough to say it's hard and it's beautiful? And I really think that the gratitude practice is what is, is the, the foundation of, of expansion of going, giving yourself enough strength to hold more of the darkness. And we are living in a time when we have access to all the darkness in the world. Previous generations did not know every bit of suffering that was happening to every human on the planet. And we do through the internet. And on one hand, that's incredible. Like we're all connected. At the same time, we are not equipped for it. We cannot take on the burden of everyone That, I mean, even saying that out loud, that feels like a spiritual bypassing thing to say. But it is the reality of the capacity of our minds and spirits. There are, you know, evolved beings and, and monks that you go to listen to lectures of that I think hold the pain of the world on a, on a grand, grand scale. But 
you and I are not lifelong monks. And so we need to practice how can we hold enough of joy so that we can also hold some pain. And that is, I think, another one of the unexpected things of, of this group and this experience is that all we're doing is sharing gratitude. And at the same time, I think we really listen and feel and are aware of one another's struggles. It's intertwined. And we don't join each other in the pain and the struggle, and, but we hold space. And we listen and we have faith that one another can get through it. And really getting to inspire one another when we can and lean on others when we can't. And I, I was talking with Lisa this morning about, I kind of had a little bit of a low moment last week when I was really trying to feel like, I don't feel like I have much to offer right now. Um, and in those moments, we need to say, the thing I'm working on is, I am having the thought that I am not have much to offer right now. And be patient and listen to others that are sharing and know that we can be inspired by others. We don't have to offer. And then... And you get through it and you might remember, ah, okay, this is a gift that I have to share. Now I have that strength to do that. You know, I, I think back of like, I'm now just about a year and one month sober. And what a wild ride this has been. I mean, there have been gratitude circles that I have hosted not sober. Um, sometimes that was fine and sometimes that was sloppy. Um, and so I am grateful for your love and understanding and patience. And there have been times in this last year when I have really been weak and felt like I don't have it to lead And I'm really grateful for this group for that reminder that that being a love warrior, being a love ambassador, does not mean you are waving a flag and playing a trumpet every day and going, yeah, woohoo, gratitude. Sometimes your job is to take care of yourself, to self-care, self-heal, because that, that place of expansion, how much you can hold, Sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's like, I'm trying to get through this day. You don't lose your job as love ambassador because that's where you are. Your job as love ambassador then is tend to you. And if that means two pints of ice cream, that means two pints of ice cream. As I think back on these four years, four years... You know, we've had births, multiple births of babies of participants here. We've had deaths. We've had graduations. We've had career changes. And we've had homelessness and home purchasing. And we've had dreams reached and dreams crushed. I mean, we really have witnessed some of them the, the, the most beautiful and horrible, which are still beautiful parts of being alive and being human and being conscious. It's so amazing that uh, Apple Unicorn and, and Anna are here. I It's such a... It's hard for people to understand that it's meaningful to just show up in front of a computer a couple times a day. You know, it's easy to put that into a, uh, a story that is not so meaningful, not so significant, maybe even 
a waste of time. But I, I get to witness the true community and the powerful hearts and the incredible courage and this kind of idea that you know, when just practice being kind, practice being nice. And if all you do in the morning is say good morning to a neighbor, that's awesome. That's a victory. And then every once in a while, you might get a hit. I need to drive, you know, 15 hours and go, go help. And I think I'm so inspired by everyone here for just practicing that headspace and reminding me to practice that mindset of I am a I'm a gifter in the world. I am a helper. I I find meaning in being of service. Which is the same thing as a gratitude practice and a self-healing journey. It's all connected in this um finding the strength to go on amongst terrible things. And I feel like we are we we are not at the end of terrible things. My spiritual beliefs are such that that's not how it works. We are born into a planet that is filled with struggle and violence and darkness so that we may practice and build our muscles of compassion and gratitude and kindness. And so at the end of our lives, it's not about what we did. It's about how strong those muscles got during this journey. And it is so, so much easier and more enjoyable when you got a workout team. So I'm, I'm so honored that you guys all heard the call and followed whatever brought you to come to your first gratitude circle and got over whatever hump to come back and got over whatever awkwardness someone said to you in a chat or whatever happened and we had the courage to share and grow and go off on our journeys and come back and and play these teeny and huge roles in one another's paths of growth. I truly believe that we have no idea the impact it will have on each other. You know, Alex could have never come back and never known how much he's affected me. And how often in our life are we in that situation that we have no idea that someone has been changed because of their interaction with us? It is not our job to figure out everything is wrong and fix it. It is our job to connect to the loving, authentic version of ourselves and act from that place and just trust that those actions will heal the world as, as needed. I say that now in a time where I'm feeling strong and confident and I acknowledge that there will be times in the future as there have been in the past when I have thoughts that feel frustrated and have doubt. And that's when I'll come to Gratitude Circle and hear your stories and remember. So, thank you for four years. Thank you for making this what it is. And thank you for changing my life. I love you so much, so much, so much, so grateful.